think, to my mind, and, and when I say I'm fairly confident that it's deadly serious, I hope I don't sound silly, there is, to my mind, something uh, profound about tanks or troops moving from one sovereign country into another. There are complications that I haven't fully got my head around. The notion of these two regions being Russia supporting um, is a complication, but the sovereign nature of Ukraine is established. So it is it is a de facto invasion. Boris Johnson describes it as such, and we're such a diminished country now that we have a prime minister whose own secretary of state was essentially boasting about being prepared to break international law now having to be the bloke who's going to somehow speak out in defence of international law. It's the problem with lawbreakers, isn't it? it they, they, they think they can pick and choose which laws matter and which laws they get to obey. But it means that there's no ground beneath their feet when it comes to criticising or condemning other lawbreakers. It becomes uh, a question simply of scale, not of rectitude, not of rightness or of wrongness. But I, I, I look at that and just feel a sense of shame, actually, that this is our player on the international stage, a man who needs an inquiry to find out whether he attended a party in his own home and couldn't negotiate peace between his Chancellor and his Secretary of State for Health yesterday, but somehow feels he's got a role to play in the negotiation of possible peace with Vladimir Putin. But something about troops crossing borders is as old as humanity itself isn't it or at least as old as nation states as old as countries as old perhaps as civilization a foreign army invading moving into a foreign country with suggestions from people who watch these things more closely and understand these things more deeply than i do that uh this is the beginning of a process rather than anything remotely resembling an end i don't know how much of vladimir putin's bizarre televised speech from the kremlin you saw last night um I, 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 I mean, it was about as close to a Hollywood depiction of a madman in charge of a nuclear power that I think you could ever see, beyond perhaps even Ian Fleming's wildest dreams. Uh, you almost expected Tom Cruise to come into the room on a, on a zip wire and take out Putin mid-rant. And what he uh, cares about is, I presume, the humiliation of the Ukrainian revolution uh, uh, and... This weird historical, and this isn't, of course, unique to Russia or to Vladimir Putin, this weird historical notion of nationhood. Uh, on the other hand, of course, as we've been exploring on this program now for a very long time, Vladimir Putin's chief priority is protecting all the money that he's stolen from the Russian people. And the only way he can do that is to keep the Russian people on a, on a very short leash and uh, ensure that they do not have their heads turned by the West by Western freedoms, by the way of life that we treasure. You'd think on a day like...